Welcome to another tutorial. Uh, in this one I'm going to talk about the terrain, uh, the latest tool to make it into Bob's Track Builder, and how it can help you build your tracks. Uh, the first thing I'll do is talk about the plot add. There's two ways to, to add terrain. This is the first of them that I added to the uh, tool list, and um, it's very simple. Just click and drag, and it attaches to the nearest uh, point on the track. Um, disadvantage of this was if you went off-road and started driving on the, the terrain and this terrain had been moved up and down, um, then it was a bit of a rough ride. Um, so in response to that I came up with this uh, other tool, which is, I call it the spline pull, because you're kind of pulling away from the spline. And um, if you zoom in and look here, uh, the panel here on your track is a one-for-one one, uh, to what you're driving on, so it's actually a bit of a, a smooth ride. Um, in addition to that, I added a, a couple of other features. Um, that just um, adds the panels. It's similar to using this. Um, it might be useful in some areas where you don't want to drive on the track. Um, it just does it every in this case every three anchors um, it attaches another terrain anchor out here um, I'll reset that back because I tend to leave this setup on and I'll show you the next feature which is the number of uh, pieces that extend out and um, you can see there it's added a lot more detail into the track um, that's all well and good but I found myself wanting to make the outside more efficient. You tend not to drive on it so you want to use less polygons. Yeah, um, so I've got a reduction feature here. I'll set that to 2 and we'll do pretty much the same terrain again. And um, you'll notice that as it moves further away from the track we've actually got less polygons sitting in there. Um, so it's smooth on the inside and efficient on the outside. Uh, if we add a, a second one on here, um, it's pretty easy to work with. Um, right click, set you into this move, or you can click on there and do the same thing. And now it's just a matter of um, pulling in the, the polys. This is the time consuming part, but um, it's still not too bad. Notice there I missed a little bit, so I'll just grab that, circle those, and uh, merge anchors. Um, cleans it up for you. So now that's done, you can move it around a little bit. Um, <coughs> from that, there's um, one option down here called Hide Selected, which um, Hide Unselected, which hides any. Um, terrain areas that aren't selected makes it easier to visualize and to work with because now we can go and select all of these anchors uh, if I hold shift and the letter Y key um, shift makes sure I don't select anything new and, and uh, continues to select those points and Y key means sideways movement doesn't affect the terrain so you can do that and um, that's all done without affecting the other terrain area there. Um, <coughs> that's well and good, but um, editing these points and trying to move them up and down um, is a little bit tedious and um, time consuming. So introduce this new tool which is the raise and lower terrain and um, that allows you just to rub over the terrain and, and have it rise or hold shift down and it will lower it. Um, there's two options here, strength. You can decrease or increase the strength, so it has, um, in this case it's going to have less impact the fine tuning. Um, and you can also do the strength here, uh, sorry the radius, um, if I set that to say 300, it'll uh, work on three times the size of that circle. Um, so if you were to zoom out large, it's going to work on all of it. Let's undo that. 
and um, I'll come back to um, splitting these pieces. Um, a couple of tools, you've already seen that one in action, and then you can use this to split the face edges. So if I just um, do another kind of circle in this area, that's a rough circle. Um, that you've cut into it. You can now apply materials or raise um, those points up and down to to manipulate the drain up a little bit more. I'll just zoom in so you can see the effect. Um, we'll move to, oh, I forgot to mention these, um, anchor auto merge. You saw me as I drag anchors across and drop them on the other. Um, that means it'll, it'll search and try and connect it to a nearby anchor. That is for top view only, so that if you're moving them around in here, they won't actually snap to each other, because it's not usually what you tend to want to do um, in these views. Moving on to the materials, there are two icons here. The first is for selecting faces, um, and the other one is to select all faces. To select a single face, um, it's just a matter of moving around and clicking, or you can drag the mouse now and um, select them all like this. Um, holding shift down um, allows you to multi select. Um, once we've done that, you can select a, a new material for it. So, in this case, I'm going to go for the, the road, oh, and we missed out on a couple of polys. It is a little bit hard to see what's selected when polys around it are selected, uh, but in this case it's it's not too difficult. Um, <coughs> the um, next thing we can do there is um, if I just go and get the material of a nearby one, come back here and we go and select all of these polys again, and click apply, it sets it back in this one. There we go. Um, the next feature is blending. Blending allows you to mix um, the grass material or any material you've got here with another material. In, in this case, I'll do it with cobble. Um, you see that it changed colour slightly, but it's hard to see because there's not much blend there. So I'll just crank this up to say 80%, and uh, you can see more of the impact that it's got. Um, I'll drop that back to absolute 0%. So that's back to the grass, and then we'll use this rub tool um, to rub in here. Um, actually, um, I haven't done that right. Tool. working just very slow what I'll do is I'll, I'll just crank the strength of that up 500 and you'll see the effects immediately there we go uh, I thought it wasn't working for a moment um, drop it back to say 200 and you can you can just single click or you can click and, and rub um, so if you actually set the strength up on all of those you can see it blending um, from one point to another um, if we go back to the shape here, a moment, you'll see that I'm actually moving that blend. So the closer you are to a point has 0% and that has 100% blend, you can see the sharp at the edge in there. Uh, I'll just zoom in a, a bit on that to demonstrate that. So it's actually changing if I move these other points to emphasize it. Um, you can see that it's changing quickly from grass into solid uh, cobblestone there, but um, if you pull this away, you get um, a more gradual blending effect through there. Um, so you can play with that, and this is probably a good way to, to do sand bits um, and um, change that material to a sand. Um, the other feature that you've got with materials is to use a background image. Um, now that's just done up for the selected faces there, 
Um, it's not so good. But um, let's grab both terrains and uh, select all faces and apply that again. And what we'll do is we'll set the percentage to say 50%. Uh, let's go and select another grass material. I like this one uh, for this terrain. And then let's go and use the rub tool and increase the radius up a bit to begin with. And uh, simply click in places, um, just roughly. And this is where your artistic ability is going to come into play. And then um, you want to do less of percentage and uh, fine tune it. And um, you can see that you can hold shift down to un undo it. Um, and uh, yeah, play away until you get something that looks decent. So um, in addition to this grass, the background, uh, this material also has a couple of other textures to it. A multiply and an additive texture which helps break up the repetition. Um, so um, that um, is fairly useful, but you know it'll take your time to to get something that looks nice. This is pretty rough. Um, oh, one other feature which I've just added recently um, was the ability. You've seen that I've um, made a mess of this a bit. It's a bit rough. If I want to flatten that out, I've got a flatten option here. And um, yeah, actually clicking these is a better way of doing it. Flatten, and it, it's still hard to see, but that is uh, totally flat on top there. So if you really mess something up, you can just grab them. Usually in that view is good, and then uh, click the flatten. Um, the background image um, is fairly versatile too. Um, if I just zoom out a bit here, you can see it sitting there. We'll just turn it off for a moment. Um, once you you started using the background image on your terrain, I actually find it easier to work without it. Um, underneath it gets a bit confusing. Um, but this is good for demonstrating how the, the background image actually works. Um, you can see that moving around on your terrain. Um, so, and see the immediate impact. Um, you'll notice if you move it off your terrain, um, nothing underneath there. It's actually um, wrapping around each time. And um, you know, we could just move it around like this and you, you see that it's um, wrapped around there many times. Um, so it's useful for doing that. Um, if I just scale it back somewhere roughly to where it was. I'm not too fussed about the actual content matching up for this demonstration, but um, we'll just export that now to Richard Burns Rally and to R Factor. And um, we switch back to those. Uh, we can load it up and view our handiwork. Not a bad effort. Um, and in Rich Burns Rally, we've got shaders now that um, allow us to do all sorts of stuff. So the same effect is happening here. And it's going to take a little bit of playing with until you get something that you're happy with. And um, plan for the future is the ability to do the same sort of blending on your roads, so you'll be able to get uh, roads that look as unique as your terrain does. Um, the only th other thing I'd like to, to mention is that the terrain here is um, integrated with the track, and if I just do it in solid plus wireframe, you can see um, the, the impact um, that you can have by working on these nodes, um, you can still move the, your uh, road around 
move it up and down, bend it, new terrain all flows with it. Um, that applies to changing the panel lengths. So if you change your panel lengths now, um, you notice all the terrain sort of matches up. So you can um, play around with it quite a bit and um, change the width on it. And again, it's all uh, hooking up. Uh, your camber, you can change that just for some sections and it'll work uh, nicely. So if we do a few camber sections there and just change that little piece. You'll see the impact that you have. Um, and uh, that's about it for this tutorial.